Traveling, working, and living full-time in my Class B van along with my dog, Willie Nelson. I'm Milo, and this is Milo Talks. I have a $99 item in my Amazon shopping cart this morning. It started two days ago. Now, let me just say, it's just in my shopping cart. I may or may not actually purchase the item. But I want to walk you through how exactly this $99 item ended up in my cart in the first place. So I'm innocently (laughs) watching the news. Now, I'm not watching watching. It's not that there's anything wrong with watching the news, but I do like, and that might surprise some of you, I actually do peruse the news. Like I'll, I'll Google on YouTube nightly news and then listen to the highlights of the broadcast for that evening. And if something interests me, I may fast forward to it. Um, I do try to be mindful of what's happening around me, even though it's a really broad scope when I watch that kind of news network. It's not local to the area that I'm at. So I'm watching kind of a like gloss over news. And this particular evening, something did catch my eye that I really wanted to see, which was the report of flying objects over military installations. Now, I don't know if I believe. How do you not know if you believe in something? But I guess I don't know what to think about aliens or UFOs. But it was also interesting because it seems like they've changed the language. They no longer call it UFOs. They were calling them like uh, un, unknown or unidentified aerial objects or something ridiculous like that. I don't know. It was a UFO. Um, maybe UFO has got such an alien context to it after all these years that they are trying to upgrade it to something else, but it's a UFO. Um, a Navy pilot had captured on his cell phone objects flying near his craft, near a government installation. So the government, what I didn't know, in 2020, set up a task force to investigate these this phenomenon that's happening. It's not, um, it wasn't just an isolated incident. There has been several over a couple different government bases. Now, some people feel like the government's been hiding secrets about UFO encounters for you know, decades. That's fine. But it makes me more curious when it's on the nightly news and that there is actually a government, you know, panel or a commission put into place to investigate. That is interesting to me. And so it takes it to a whole nother level of, oh, wait, what's happening? But again, um, an unknown aerial object flying over a government site. Clearly, it's probably just a drone. But Um, I digress. So here's the point. The point is, I'm thinking 2020 was the year of global pandemic. Maybe 2021 is when the year that aliens finally tell us that they're here or we become or we get visited and get solid confirmation through the nightly news. (laughs) There are actually aliens flying to our planet. I wouldn't know what to do with it, but it would be fascinating all the same. So because I'm looking at this, I dive into it deeper. The next day, I decide I want to look at some more footage of that. So I go to my trusty YouTube. I I type in UFO sighting 2021, whatever. Well, my clip that I'm watching is interrupted because I don't pay for the no ads on YouTube. I just figure I'll ignore them. And this is when the trouble started. There were the ad popped up and it was a guy and he had I had to watch him for five seconds as he's walking down a sidewalk with a gray beanie on, and he's telling me how the gray beanie is protecting him from 5G and 4G and EMF frequency radiation. It was a poorly shot video, and the fact that it's just his face walking with this beanie on his head while he's holding his cell phone. But clearly it worked, because I wanted to know why that beanie was protecting him from frequencies that I really didn't know anything about. So at the end of it, so it passes the five, four, three, you can skip this ad, two, one. I kept watching him because I wanted him to tell me why this beanie was so special. It looked just like a regular beanie. It's um, woven with silver. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And instantly in my head, this, the scene from Signs pops in my head when they're sitting on the sofa with their tinfoil cone hats. Um, 
And I thought, oh, wow, are we serious? Silver threaded beanie will protect him from what? So then I'm more curious about the what, not so much the beanie, but what, what is he protecting himself from? So, cause I'm already down this hole, right? Like I have, I'm sliding further, further down this rabbit hole. Now I type in EMF hat and what I got was not his beanie, um, but I did get a bunch of EMF protective equipment, you know, EMF readers, um, EMF cards that I put with my cell phone because my cell phone is emitting EM, EMF frequencies. And and by the way, electromagnetic frequencies. So that's, a, I'm telling you, there's so much information out there, but I, I am, I'm skimming this because that's exactly what I did. I was like a rock skipping across the water, just choo, 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 oh, cause I threw it really well and it just skimmed right across the water. So I'm hitting all these little spots and there in the Amazon list of EMF protectors was this bracelet. This bracelet you could wear anywhere. You could dress it up or dress it down. You could sleep in it. You could swim in it. You could run in it. And what it did while you were wearing it was protect you, full body protection, like a shield to EMF frequency. (laughs) And so thankfully they had a video to talk about it. And what really was captivating is that I give more, I found myself giving more credit to this thing with its very vague description of how it worked because it said it was based out of European technology. (laughs) And so they had like pictures of scientists in the Alps. It was just, it was was crazy, right? But I'm, I want to, I want to believe this. I want to believe that a simple bracelet with little, with four little color dots on the back of it that are energy something somethings will protect me from harmful EMF frequency that's everywhere, according to the videos, by the way. It's everywhere. And that reminded me of something. When I was working for a company, they were in Canada. It was a Canada company, but we had, they had um, hubs in the United States. And I traveled driving a van very much like what I'm driving now, but it was filled with lasers and equipment analyzing road conditions. But one of our locations was a town that we could not get any cell phone service at because it was in a low um, frequency uh, blocked town. And it was because there was an observatory there. And apparently the radiation and the noise caused by every house, every, every mundane things that you don't think of, all those things would block the the strength or the ability for that telescope to punch through the sky, which is really a nuisance when you're trying to work in an area and you need to (laughs) upload data. So we'd have to leave town. You'd have to go about a mile outside of town and everything would be fine. What was very interesting about this town, and this is again four years ago, people were moving there because they were suffering from what they felt was an EMF type of disease. It was affecting their nervous system, headaches, um, all kinds of symptoms. And you can look that stuff up. But um, here I am now, four or five years later, diving into looking at my own bracelet. Now, I don't suffer from anything. I, ha- I mean, I may suffer from things, but I don't suffer from anything that a bracelet gonna, is going to fix. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to fix me or <laughs> make me um, less, uh, I guess, complicated. But I did put the $99 EMF protective bracelet in my shopping basket on Amazon. I went down the rabbit hole of EMF. <laughs> And I still have the bracelet in my shopping cart. And as I'm saying all this, there's a part of me deep down in there. And she's like, I really want that bracelet. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that voice will win out. We, we were going to have to talk some more. So anyway, that was my rabbit hole. I hope you, I hope you don't fall down many yourself. But if you do, I totally get it. Thank you for listening to Milo Talks. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Milo Talks or email me at milotalksstrangers at gmail.com.